I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about caffeine as a nootropic, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Now, caffeine is the most widely consumed stimulant and psychoactive drug on the planet. Caffeine is a methylated xanthine, which are a group of alkaloids commonly used as mild stimulants. Xanthine is a purine-based naturally found in most of your body's tissues. Caffeine is chemically related to adenine and guanine, which are the bases of DNA and RNA. Now, the most common source of caffeine is the coffee bean from which coffee is extracted. Other natural sources include leaves of the tea plant, cocoa beans, cola nuts, holly leaves, yerba mate leaves, seeds from guarana berries, and guayusa leaves. The earliest evidence of coffee as a beverage comes from 15th century Sufi monasteries in Yemen. By the 16th century, coffee made its way through to the Middle East and up to Italy and the rest of Europe. Now, coffee plants were then exported with early explorers and settlers in the Americas. Chinese legend tells us that tea as a source of caffeine was first used in about 3000 BCE. And the earliest evidence of caffeine use native to the Americas comes from cocoa bean residue found in a Mayan pot dating from 600 BCE. Today, coffee and tea are drunk in most countries, but typically one predominates. For example, coffee is, preferred in, uh, is the preferred caffeine source in Europe and the Americas, while tea is preferred elsewhere. Now, despite the worldwide popularity of caffeine use as a stimulant for everyone from students to, mili to the military to seniors, the only organization that currently bans the use of caffeine is the, the NCAA. Well, first, caffeine promotes alertness. Caffeine is an adenosine receptor antagonist. Adenosine functions as an inhibitory neurotransmitter in your brain. Now, during the day, as adenosine levels rise, wakefulness decreases and eventually leads to sleep. As a, an adenosine antagonist, caffeine acts by blocking two of four adenosine receptor subtypes, A1 and A2A. Preventing adenosine from coupling with these two receptor subtypes increases wakefulness. A 13-night sleep study was conducted with normal young adult males. Each participant received a cup of warm water, one, two, or four cups of regular coffee, a four-cup equivalent of decaffeinated coffee, or a four-cup equivalent of caffeine. Regular coffee produced dose-related changes in standard sleep parameters, and four cups of coffee uh, produced the same as, worked the same as the equivalent dose of caffeine. Now, caffeine caused REM sleep to shift to the early part of the night in stage three and four sleep to shift to later than in the normal sleep cycle. The researchers concluded that coffee and caffeine may be used in normal people to induce symptoms of insomnia. And second, caffeine improves physical endurance. Multiple studies show that trained athletes experience improved performance from low to moderate doses of caffeine. Now, some studies found improved trial performance and maximum cycling power, likely from a greater reliance on fat metabolism and decreased muscle fatigue. Caffeine helps athletes train longer and at greater power output and post-exercise recovery benefits from more glucose being taken up by cells and stored as a glycogen. In fact, caffeine can be effective in so effective in sports that the World Anti-Doping Agency banned the use of caffeine in athletes from 1962 to 1972 and again from 1984 to 2003. Caffeine was removed from the prohibited list of drugs but is still part of their monitoring pro program so that they can monitor the possible misuse of it in sport. Well, caffeine is the most widely used psychoactive drug in the world, boosting attention and normalizing mood and cognition. 
A study at John Hopkins University showed that caffeine enhanced consolidation of long-term memory. The enhanced memory performance occurred four hours after caffeine consumption. Now this study is especially relevant if you're looking for nootropics for study because it means that caffeine consumed after a study session helps consolidate memory of what you studied. Caffeine improves reaction time, increases alertness and focus. Caffeine and coffee have been shown to repair DNA damage. Long-term caffeine use has been associated with a reduced risk of diabetes. An increased caffeine intake is associated with a decreased risk of malignant melanoma. And increased caffeine consumption also protects against cataract blindness. So how you feel on caffeine varies from person to person, but for most it depends on how much you consume. Caffeine acts as a central nervous system stimulant. So once it crosses the blood-brain barrier, the most notable, noticeable effect is alertness. Caffeine stimulates the release of dopamine, which accounts for the pleasant feeling you associate with your first cup in the morning. Most neurohackers report that consuming caffeine makes you more productive. You should find it easier to concentrate and get things done. And using a caffeinated beverage after a study session should help you recall what you studied more easily. But caffeine later in the afternoon or in the evening resets your internal body clock or your circadian rhythm and delays the natural rise of melatonin, which is your body's primary sleep hormone. So consuming coffee, tea, or an energy drink too late in the day will likely leave you unable to sleep. And quitting caffeine abruptly can lead to some pretty nasty withdrawal symptoms. Uh, we'll cover side effects a little bit later on in this video. Well, there's been a ton of research done on caffeine and caffeine use. Um, I'm going to mention one here and the rest are over on uh, NootropicsExpert.com. The first one I wanted to bring up is caffeine reduces the risk of suicide. Now, drinking several cups of coffee daily appears to reduce the risk of suicide by about 50%, according to, study, uh, to a study at the Harvard School of Public Health. Study authors reviewed data from three large studies and found that the risk of adult suicide who drank two to four cups of caffeinated coffee per day was about half compared to those who drank decaffeinated coffee or no coffee. Caffeine not only stimulates the central nervous system, but also acts as a mild antidepressant by boosting the production of serotonin, dopamine, and epinephrine. So after analyzing all of the data, researchers concluded our results suggest an association between greater consumption of coffee and a lower risk of suicide. Now I've also got a study over on Nootropics Expert for caffeine on how it improves cognitive performance. And I've got another one on how caffeine reduces depression. And I've got another clinical study on how caffeine boosts memory. So if you'd like to see these studies in more detail, please go to NootropicsExpert.com and search for caffeine or click on the link below this video. According to the Mayo Clinic, 400 milligrams of caffeine per day appears to be safe for most healthy adults. That's the amount of caffeine in four cups of regular brewed coffee, or about one and a half Starbucks tall coffees. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends ages 12 to 18 limit caffeine intake to no more than 100 milligrams a day. And the half-life of caffeine is four to six hours, and you experience the effects of caffeine for at least four hours. Now be aware that sources of caffeine include coffee, tea, Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew, um, five hour energy shot, and monster energy drinks. And one Starbucks tall coffee can contain 235 milligrams of caffeine. So it's surprisingly easy to quickly exceed your personal caffeine limit before you begin to experience caffeine toxicity. Now, everyone has a different tolerance level before experience these um, symptoms of caffeine overdose. So listen to your body and know what your personal limit is. 
One of the most popular and simple nootropic stacks is caffeine stacked with L-theanine. A study with 49 people was conducted at uh, Wageningen University in the Netherlands to uh, assess the effects of caffeine, L-theanine, and EGCG, which is found in green tea, on mood and cognitive performance. Study authors noted that as little as 40 milligrams of caffeine has been shown to improve performance on long duration cognitive tasks, alertness, arousal, and vigor. The team also noted that just 200 milligrams of L-theanine improved feelings of calmness, relaxation, and less uh, depression. And when L-theanine and caffeine were combined, there was significant improvement in alertness and attention switching task performance, more so than just with caffeine alone. The researchers concluded these studies provided reliable evidence showing that L-theanine and caffeine have clear beneficial effects on sustained attention, memory, and suppression of uh, distraction. Moreover, L-theanine was found to lead to relaxation by reducing caffeine-induced arousal. Caffeine is a xanthine alkaloid that can be profoundly toxic and deadly. But reports of caffeine overdoses resulting in death are relatively rare. However, it's surprisingly easy to go into caffeine toxicity territory, so please always check the labels on caffeinated beverages and energy drinks. Doses as little as 200 milligrams can be toxic to sensitive people. Symptoms of ca ca caffeine toxicity include feeling wired, uh, breathing trouble, confusion, diarrhea, fainting, uh, fever, hallucination, increased thirst and or urination, heart palpitations, restlessness, sweating, muscle tremors, and rapid heartbeat. Caffeine is addictive and you can quickly build up a tolerance to its energizing effects. Caffeine withdrawal is serious and can include anxiety, fatigue, headaches, irritability, digestive problems, and trouble concentrating. Do not combine any source of caffeine with ephedrine, certain antibiotics, and certain birth control pills or echinacea. I've got a longer list of what you should not combine caffeine with over on the main post on Nootropics Expert. So check with your doctor or pharmacist if you're using any other medications that may be affected with caffeine. Doses of 10 grams of caffeine can be fatal. Now, although this varies from person to person, in one case, a person died from only 240 milligrams of caffeine. And finally, a teaspoon of ca um, caffeine powder has 3,200 milligrams of caffeine. You get caffeine from a variety of sources, including coffee, green or black tea, energy drinks or shots, caffeinated beverages like cola, yerba mate, chocolate, over-the-counter stimulant uh, supplements, and some weight loss drugs, and a few pre-formulated nootropic stacks. Caffeine is a natural alkaloid found in seeds and leaves of certain plants. Caffeine in coffee originates primarily from the bean of the coffee uh, arabica, which is a small shrub or tree that grows in high altitude subtropical regions of the world. Caffeine anhydrous is manufactured from the beans of coffee plants. Anhydrous simply means that it's without water. Caffeine is extracted from the bean and um, dehydrated, which produces a highly concentrated caffeine powder. So my nootropics expert recommendation for caffeine is 200 to 400 milligrams per day. And that's my report on caffeine. If you want to see links on the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for caffeine, or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. Now, if you have any questions, or you want to share your experience using caffeine, please use the comment section at the bottom of the post on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. 
I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.